another second. It's a bit jumpy and there is a circle, but it's saying I'm live. So if you can hear me, hi, hello, I hope you're well. It's actually, um, here we are, I think we're live. Can you get me? It's Time Out Thursday and I'm coming to you from my dining room table because I have been making dinner whilst getting some stuff ready for today. And um, I'm going to a workshop this evening, so I am preparing food for my family. So that's done in advance, as mums do. I'm wearing my new glasses. I don't know if you saw my post last week. I went to get two new pairs of glasses at Specsavers. I had declined by quarter of a whatever it's called between two years ago and now. So it's good that um, my eyesight's not deteriorating rapidly, but um, I, it was good that I went and got my eyes checked because I was um, feeling headachey. And since I've got my new glasses with bigger frames as well, there's not so much um, eye strain from going like this all the time, which is what I was tending to do. So um, I'm much happier with my new bigger framed um, middle-aged lady glasses, as they're called. And uh, yesterday, interestingly, I took my daughter to get an eye test and um, 18 months ago when she had a vision test that they said, you know, predominantly she was fine. But this year in prep, she struggled a bit with um, learning to read and it's become a little bit of a challenging thing at home to try and to get her to practice reading. And by accident, as sometimes good things happen to us, I'd met this amazing lady called Heather Coleman, who is an Erlen assessor. And I have been um, formed a friendship with her husband, who is a children's author. And I have copies of her brochures, which talks about Erlen syndrome. And so I read the brochure and I had a chat with Heather about some of the um, things that my daughter has done since she was a very young child and also challenges she's been having this year. So we agreed that we would test her for Erlen. So we did that test yesterday and it showed very, very clearly that she has Erlen syndrome, which is an optical um, nerve processing issue that the words don't make it to the back of the brain and the narrow the vi vision of words and the re um, view of words are very different. So if she knows she'll see three words that are the same on the same page and not recognize them each time because they look different in each location. So. That was phenomenal. So we went and got her glasses yesterday and she'll have the colored lenses glasses, which enables, and it was funny because as soon as we put the colored um, lens paper over the words, the words were just jumping out at her. So it was a bit miraculous really. So I'm grateful that I've made a friend by accident who is um, hopefully going to um, allow my daughter to um, not have a fear of reading anymore and to be, um, much more confident and less anxious when it comes to that. So that was a gift yesterday. Um, an expensive gift, but a gift never the same. So um, this last week we had her hearing sorted out. She's had a hearing test. She's had her grommets moved. Her hearing's normal. Now we've got her eyes sorted out. And the next thing on the list is her heart because she has a very, very speedy heartbeat and a little bit of an arrhythmia. So we're going to see a specialist about that um, and hope that that is fine too. So it's... Um, going through all of the parental things. And it's interesting, you know, because I've often joked with my boss in the UK that I don't know how um, parents have time for jobs <laughs> because you spend either all your time, you know, looking after your kids or getting everyone ready. And then, you know, that's why at the end of the day, there's nothing left for you. Um, but we've talked about that and joked about it and um, let alone chasing your dreams or trying to create something um, seems like an impossibility. But which is why I am on a mission to change that for parents. Um, and I feel that um, for myself personally, I'm starting to achieve it. But a lot of it comes down to consistently making efforts and practicing. Um, so I want to share with you a story about an onion because I have been using this story recently to explain some stuff to people and it's very pertinent and I think it will resonate with you as well. It just so happened that I had an onion in the pantry cupboard um, and um, the funny thing about this one is it's been there a little while so the shell's a little bit cracked. I guess you call it a shell, a skinned, it's an onion skin. So 
this is a person and the brown onion skin represents our exterior our mask um, our um, our outer shell and um, and how we're perceived to the world and what we allow to enter our lives so you know obviously we work really really hard to keep our shell or our skin intact and the interesting thing about this one it's a bit cracked and peeling and from time to time that happens and what we do is we work really really hard to put that back together as quickly as possible because we don't want people to see our our cracks um, and sometimes we don't acknowledge exactly how you know big or painful those cracks might be but what's very interesting about a person as with an onion is if well the good what happens when you cut into an onion let me ask you that I think you'll know the answer because when you cut into an onion you start crying so we avoid cutting into an onion as with our life we avoid um, cutting into ourselves because it's painful but an onion is made up of many many layers and if you take off the outer shell there's a layer and you go oh that's interesting and you take off the next um, layer and you think oh that's interesting I'm making a huge mess here on my my notebook but never mind there's another layer and then if you took off that white one there'd be another layer another layer another layer, and so on and so on and so forth until at the very center of this onion is an incredibly soft juicy non spicy non painful part of us um, and that is kind of where at the core of us is our magic or our true self or our soul you know the beautiful bit at the center um, but if we're all the time trying to keep this exterior intact and we don't peel back the layers or indeed cut into it to see what's there we'll never be able to reveal the juicy succulent delicious soulful part at the center of ourselves and it's interesting because part step one and step two of my book is peeling back those layers of your life and reflecting on them and sorting them out and filing through them and making sense of them and some people get stuck there and they can't move on because they don't want to go to those painful parts they don't want to peel off their shell and you know people say oh I'm fine or I'm chilled out or that's too much hard work and it is a little bit of hard work to be honest but the truth is that the magic is at the middle and each layer represents an aspect of your life that you need to kind of uncover first and foremost or second of all get to know yourself because we are so many layers and once you uncover another layer you can go a bit deeper and you think oh that's interesting you go a bit deeper and, oh that's interesting I didn't realize that about myself and you go a bit deeper and then you start to feel the soulful bit at the center of you and you know rather than get stuck on the outer shell the hard bit or the first bit that makes you cry we need to keep going and um, it is painful a little bit but you know I fully believe that going through the painful part of taking away the shell cutting into ourselves and peeling back the layers is the real um, key to transformation and then we start to uncover the magic at the middle and that's kind of why later on in the book you know by the time you get to step 8 step 9 step 10 step 11 you've really then start living to your to your purpose because you've uncovered the truth the real you and you stop the self-sabotaging and you stop the self-destruction and you stop the um, the unhealthy habits that are causing you to you know to be stuck and to live with your brown shell intact so that's just a really interesting insight about an onion it relates to all people I have found um, that I have met and talked to and indeed myself I probably spent far too many years keeping my brown shell intact and not looking at the different layers of myself and now I enjoy discovering new aspects and layers of myself all of the time so tidied up one mess um, so yes do have a think about that and if you have started to read my book and you're feeling uncomfortable about step one and step two think about the onion analogy because that will make it easier to move and progress through that because once you progress through that then you start to enter into a new dimension a new paradigm a new reality etc so that's really cool um, way to um, uncover yourself so I wanted to share with you today a few insights into some coaching tips that I have been using so about six weeks ago no it's two months ago now I started my first one-on-one -on -one coaching and interestingly um, my first one-to-one -one coaching was with a man and I was very grateful for that because I feel that actually 
everything that I teach um, not only relates to women, it relates to men as well. Um, and it's been great validation to see how much progress he's made so quickly, how he's embraced so many of the tools that I have given him and how he's really progressed as an individual and what he has done in his life to kind of embed and build healthy habits. So in the in last 10 days, I now have almost a full roster of one-to-one -one clients. So I had one and now in 10 days, I now have five more. So I've got six one-to-one -one clients, which is amazing. And I feel that um, I've got two men and four women and each of them are very different aspects of their lives in terms of, you know, with kids, without kids, um, single, not single, um, older, younger. And it's re really, 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 really interesting that the stuff that I teach is applicable at all different stages in your life. And I think that's because I have obviously lived and worked in so many different places. I can relate to people on so many different levels um, and can kind of, you know, tailor what I'm talking about to suit um, certain types of people and their situation. And to be very, very honest, because if we're very, very honest, then we can have actually really open conversations with people because I'm not stuck with my brown shell intact, as it were. So um, some coaching insights. So what I've been doing with people is to help them understand the importance of a support system. Now, we have the expression, it takes a village to raise a child, and, but what we tend to do as adults is we let go of our village and we think that we need to do everything on our own. So we let go of our support systems or we have, um, when we've asked for support or we've sought support from people, we get judgment and lack of compassion. So therefore we tend to try and do everything on our own, which is fine, but in, um, for a short time, but then over long periods of time, that becomes very detrimental to your health and well-being. because in the same way that it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a village to support and nourish a healthy person and you can't do everything on your own long term and I guess I have experienced that for myself and I'm really conscious of helping people understand and, and to find and to build a supportive support system and often when we're looking for support we look to those closest to us but um, and those closest people closest to us will often not give us the compassion that we need at the time that we need it they will judge us for what we're asking them and also it tends to happen that our feelings um, are dismissed or diminished and that's very painful as well so if um, what I tend to do now is if I'm seeking support and someone dismisses or diminishes me or um, judges me then I swipe left and I find the next person and I find the next person and now I know who is my healthy support system and you know swiping left on people who don't give you that nourishment and support and diminish or dismiss your feelings um, they're not in your team so I help people create a team, understand who's in their team, what they need from their team to support them and, um, and to foster that team as well. So that's been really quite powerful for a number of people when they actually realize that they're probably out there on their own doing it for a long time and, and they can't sustain it. And then I talk a lot with people about judgment because I hear a lot, oh, but people are so judgy and, you know, oh, I'm, I worry about what people think of me. Well, the truth of the matter is that if you have people judging you, it's also probably because you're judging them or you're judging yourself. So if you want to have no judgment or non-judgment from people, then you need to start with not judging yourself and not judging others. And when you start to embrace that philosophy of non-judgment to self and non-judgment to others, you invite non-judgmental people into your life and you start to be able to look at um, situations quite um, differently. Um, and that's a really powerful thing is to have that non-judgment because all you can do is role model non-judgment in order to receive non-judgment. Um, because I could sit around all the time thinking and worrying about what people think of me um, or feel about me, but the truth is that as long as I'm practicing non-judgment of myself, then it shouldn't worry me or concern me what other people's thoughts and feelings of me because I'm on my own journey and they're on their journey and they're doing their thing and I'm doing my thing. Um, so I just try to keep it um, with that frame of reference. In terms of help, so we're not so good at asking for help even though we might be very helping people and I help people understand that if we can't ask for help, we can't give help. So. Um, and compassion and how to you know be honest with ourselves because if we're expecting 
kindness um, and um, and love, but we're not giving ourselves kindness and love, then it's um, it's not possible to think that we're going to attract that or receive that in return because so if we're not really honest about our feelings we're not really honest about what our thoughts are we're not really honest with ourselves about that we are judging people or that we are having negative thoughts or feelings or behaviors or that we are um, self-sabotaging if we're not honest about who we are as people then we don't attract people who are honest to us and we can't ask for honest feedback and honest support and honest behaviors and a lot of that comes down to your values as well. But the thing is, if you're not role modeling your values to yourself, you can't expect to attract those people into your life. So those are some interesting things that have kind of, you know, come up with um, a lot of people that I've been working with. Um, and, you know, even in our retreat in October, we talked about a lot of this stuff quite a bit. And it was interesting to see um, people's kind of eyes wide open when they realize that, yes, they they don't want to be judged. They need to stop judging themselves. Um, so support systems, building healthy habits into our lives, you know, a foundation of healthy habits, not just health at certain periods, because you don't just become mindful and stay mindful. You don't just become healthy and stay healthy. It's a practice and you have to continually work at it. So it's continually working at those healthy habits and that's keeping that foundation strong. Um, you know, reframing our thoughts, reframing our feelings, reframing and reflection as well. Like, what did I learn from this? What have I learned from this year? What have I learned about myself? What has come up for me this year that has really challenged me that I know going into next year I could potentially do better? Um, and then how do we balance our physical health with the demands of our modern life? And how do we um, look at nutrition in a very different way to how we may have done in the past? Because a lot of us are busy and we think I just need to eat. Um, but if we start to reframe how we just need to eat, we can actually make better choices. You know, what I've been doing with some of my clients is physically taking them to the supermarket and walking around with them. And I'm calling it shopping well at Woolies or, you know, shopping creatively at Coles. Because when you walk people around, you show them the difference between nutrient dense food versus non nutrient dense food. You show them, they start to reframe their mindset about certain types of vegetables or certain types of food groups. and you know things like that it really starts to open up people's mind because they think oh okay i'm ingesting nutrients i am you know giving myself an immune boost i'm doing this and you can start to use different language in how you think and feel about food which then by default invites you to actually want to have better food and to nourish your body in a different way um, and then once you've, you know, built a foundation of healthy habits and sustaining habits, you then can discover, you know, how, you know, to tap into your true potential because all of the challenges and the things that come up, you have room on your plate to manage them because you're not going to um, be railroaded or you're not going to be living your life in fear. You're not going to be constantly reacting to everything that happens to you. You're going to be able to do self-coaching and positive self-talk and reframing and reflection in order to make sense of that um, as things happen on a day-to-day -day basis. And some of my clients have joked that they have downloaded my voice into their head as they've got Chrissy Siri on the brain. And Chrissy Siri is kind of talking to them as they're going about their day saying, you know, just breathe, just think about this, what about this? And that's quite interesting and funny and, and cool at the end of the day. So that is brilliant. So um, yesterday, if you may have seen my post last night, we've got eight spots left. Eight? How do I do eight on this there? Eight spots left for March retreat, which is at Mission Beach, um, 12 to 14th of March. It's um, super awesome. I'm so excited. I can't wait because we've re rejuvenated the program for 2021. Um, some new guest speakers and collaborators and um, a few um, new women joining as well as women who were at the last retreat so it's just going to be incredible and i can't wait for that so if you want to be one of the eight just please drop me a message and i've been using this week to kind of get ready for the next two weeks because next week is going to be pretty epic um and this week so many amazing things have happened as well so um I kind of go to bed each night pinching myself that it was another amazing day and how did that turn out to be another amazing day but equally I've reframed things so instead of worrying about all the stuff I have to do I think to myself I wonder what's going to happen today even if I know I've got a busy day a lot to achieve and a lot on my plate I keep saying to myself I wonder what's going to happen today and then I get to the end of every day and I think holy crap I can't believe all that stuff happened today it was amazing 
and next week all being well um, it should be an epic week so um, I'm really starting to think about how to conserve my energy um, to get through all of that um, in a good way a lot of stuff that I've got planned um, and um, and um, you know an amazing platform and foundation moving into 2021. So this Sunday you'll find me at Potter's Market at Flinders Street Mall and I'm just outside Flinders Lane. I'll be joined by Katie St. Clair from the Kindness Community. Um, Katie's doing an amazing kindness thing leading up to Christmas. I'll have books with me um, and you can come along and have a chat with me about coaching, retreats or whatever you like. Um, so that's um, a lot. Now I wanted to share with you a new poem that I've written. And this new poem has come about from a few different angles. So since when I started to become more conscious of my um, health, I started to pick up on things in the mirror and I could see, you know, different color to my skin. The pallor of my skin was quite gray. I was very congested. Um, I looked very lethargic and my face was very puffy. Um, I had a lot of inflammation in my body and so on and so forth. And now that I've become very aware and in tune with my own body and my own energy, I can start to see in other people stress and illness emanating or permeating from their skin um, and from their face and the way they carry their body and the way they hold themselves. Um, and um, that's been quite insightful because I have noticed several things throughout the course of this year with specific people. Um, about their looking at them and seeing that they were immensely stressed or they had a lot of you could see toxicity in their body um, and then you know things happened to them they got sick or they got injured or they got um, an illness or they quit their job or something happened and it was very interesting for me to make a conscious um, note that oh my god that person is looking like blah and then and then that thing unfolded so it kind of made me aware more of you know what we carry and emanate outside of our body and stress does emanate outside of our body um, and illness emanates outside of our body and if we start to become aware of that we can maybe you know hopefully um, get on a path to healing and health much quicker so um, this also relates not just to myself but to um, a friend of mine who I've become friends with this year and she's had an incredibly traumatic um, few years, I would say, due to um, illness of her child and relationship breakdown and so on and so forth. And um, I, you know, had she's read my book and she really enjoyed it and loved it. And um, uh, since that time, you know, I gave her some encouragement about looking after herself and thinking about the future in a different way and you know realizing how resilient and strong she is to have coped the last few years with everything that's happened to her and how she can be optimistic about the future because the child is now well and she's a very intelligent person and she can create the life that she wants um, and she was grateful for that compassion and moral support so when I wrote this poll, and, and then recently she decided to go on a detox and she's lost more than 22 kilos and a lot of the toxicity from the stress and the trauma that she's been carrying around the body has just almost melted away from her and she looks like a different person. And it was funny because obviously I've been watching her getting smaller and smaller and smaller and I said to her the other day, do you realize that you, you're actually shrinking and you look like a different person? And she said, she didn't notice it so much herself until she saw a picture of her the day she started the detox and now, and it's a completely different person looking at her. And I said, well, the person that you were then, did you look in the mirror and think, that's not me? And I said, and do you look in the mirror now and think, that's not me? But, but at the same time, did you realize that, you know, that's how you were and, and, and we kind of laughed about how that happens for us you just look in the mirror and think well that's who i am and you don't see that sick person or you don't see that person that's carrying a lot of trauma and toxicity in their body so this poem is dedicated to um to her and to all the people that are carrying um things in their body and um and to look at it as um something bigger than just your personal image so it's called a mirror and I'll post it in the comments. The mirror. I see a mirror with a face staring back at me. She is broken, 
sad and suffering, I see. Her eyes don't shine, her hair is weak. There is no dewy glow, or so to speak. I look at her and her at me. There's no trace of vanity. I'm dying to ask that girl in the glass, what happened to you? What have you been through? But then she tells me, I see what you see. You are me and I am you and I was there too. I know what you've been through. I see your pain. I see your beauty. I see that little girl we once called cutie. I see your strength. I see your shame. I see your spirit and know your name. Your face reflects the hurts inside and all the times you've cried. I smile at her and her at me. It's not just my face I now can see. So that's my poem called The Mirror. Made me feel a bit emotional actually. So um, have a great week um, and do think about your onion. Do think about some um, you know, healthy support systems for yourself and remember if you're not getting support, compassion, you're being dismissed or you have judgment, then it's okay to swipe left on that and move on and find the support systems that you need for this time in your life. And um, yeah, drop me a message if you want to chat about coaching and I really am grateful for you watching and, and being involved with this. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.